Stop right there. On June 22, 2001, a major blockbuster film came out and changed the very definition of cool along with majorly influencing the car community, and let's face it, it also changed the world as we knew it. This film is none other than The Fast and the Furious, and since then it spawned 9 direct sequels, one side story, some beef between the cast, WHAT MORE DO YOU WANT FROM ME? <laughs> and each sequel becoming more outrageous, action-packed, and, uh, marvelous than the ones prior. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always angry. Hulk smash! Each sequel has evolved to raise the mindless blockbuster chaos, which is no problem for me because I'm a fan of mindless chaos, specifically in regards to the OG Transformers trilogy with the homie Shia LaBeouf. Optimus! However, if I'm being truthful, I personally believe that they should have stopped at Fast Five. Because after that, the Furious verse detaches too much from its roots. And what are its roots? A blockbuster racing movie? Yes, but also perhaps a hood film. So, was the Fast and the Furious really a hood film? Well, let's find out because I got quite a bit of evidence. The film begins with a trailer being set up for a heist or a ahem, lick when these souped up I want to say Honda Civics show up trying to gank the trailer. And just out of curiosity, I wonder if this film is the reason why trailers have to have that big old sheet in between the gap of their tire space. Honestly, if you know the answer, put it down there. But already we've got one hood slash barrio variable present in the film, Prime. The scene then fades into Paul Walker's character, Brian, shifting gears and spinning out of control. And would you look at that, we get our second variable in regards to it being a hood film. It taking place in the LA area. Brian pulls up to the Toretto's cafe and he's spitting game and creating chemistry with the worker Maya or Mia. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna get those confused throughout the review. Every day for the last three weeks you've been coming in here and you've been asking me how the tuna is now. I'll have the tuna. No crust? No crust. When all of a sudden Dom's crew shows up and starts spitting out that overcomplicated mechanic talk. Jesse, say working, brother. Do we start? I like in the injected pulse. Another millisecond, just tune the NOS timer, you'll run nine. Nah, dog, you got it all wrong. It's the Ligma circuit, the Ligma balls. Vince then starts to cock block Brian and creates drama. Try fat burger from now on, you get yourself a double cheese with fries for $2.95. I like the tuna here. Bullsh Oh, no one likes a tuna here. Yeah, well, I do. <laughs> I don't think he was talking about the food, if you know what I'm saying. So, they open a can of putazos. Vin Diesel's character, Dominic Toretto, stops the fighting, and he also has the hookup with Brian's boss, and almost gets Brian fired from his car parts delivery job. Hey, man, he was in my face. I'm in your face. Don't come around here again. You work for Harry, right? Yeah, I just started. You were just fired. I've never done anything like this before! Now we're at a car meet that turns into a street takeover and quickly gets dangerous. I'm just kidding. You already know what's in these Furious Verse scenes. Cars and women. And here we get the third indication of any hood slash barrio film. Hector from the Hectorverse. Dom's crew pulls up and I'm not gonna lie. Does this shot look CG? Frills though. Also Dom is trying to get some tuna if you know what I'm saying. Ow! I smell skanks. Let's not leave out Ja Rule for some reason. Anyways, Brian nudges his way into the race and he's trying to also take the respect. They all race and Brian overdoes it because his Ligma gasket breaks and his bolt carrier group jams because the trigger on his hammer overheated. And I'm just making this stuff up. No way in hell this happens. Honestly, did his interior break because of the Nas? Don't make no sense. Regardless, Brian loses the race and then Dom lectures him about winning. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. And do you know what would make all of these cars, including yours, a lot cooler and faster? Bam, an old body sticker. Don't you know, man? For every sticker that you put on your car, that's 
five extra horsepower, boom, 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 25 extra horsepower. And if you want to look badass as Dom, but if you don't have the muscles or the sleeve lifts mechanic jackets to do so, you embarrass me! then look pretty badass with the old body old t-shirts. So if you feel like helping out the channel, this is how you do it. But now let's get back to the review. The Popo comes and Toretto almost gets arrested, but Brian saves him and they get away while getting to know each other a bit more on the ride. They then suddenly get pulled over by reason number four of any hood slash barrio film territory slash three slash gang beef. This Asian crew destroys Brian's car and exposition happens. A business deal that went sour. Plus I made the mistake of sleeping with his sister. Damn, my boy Don is really on a tuna diet bulk. <laughs> They get back to Dom's house party and he brings Brian there to chill. The next day it turns out that Brian is an undercover agent and he's trying to bust the people hijacking the trailers so he tries to get in close with Toretto. It's a family barbecue scene and it's a wholesome scene but Vince again gets pretty petty that Brian is there. Later Brian spits game at Mia. No, I think we should go out sometime. All the while Vince is giving them both a hard time and she dead ass stone cold cucks Vince right in front of Brian. Who's that Cuban restaurant you wanted to take me to? One with the, the picadillo and the... Little red candle, the... Cha-cha-cha. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, you can take me there. Friday night at 10. Is that good for you? Oh! So, Vince then takes a seat in the cuck chair. Later, Hector stops by at Brian's job, and another body old film staple appears. Knee-high socks. Anyways, in doing this, Brian suspects that it's Hector's crew hijacking the trailers, so he does some detective work, but Don and Vince catch him creeping. They then interrogate him Batman style. I'm vengeance. Although Brian is able to BS his way out of it. I owe, I owe you a 10 second car, and what this is about, this is about race wars. They then go take Brian to do some hood rat stuff on the rival's cars. The Asian crew shows up and they do some criminal bad guy stuff. Brian relays this information to his superiors. Then at the garage, Dom decides to all of a sudden have a heart to heart with Brian, revealing his past tragedies, his father's death, along with his life mottos. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Nothing else matters. For those 10 seconds or less, I'm free. He also reveals that one iconic charger. She is a nice car. Cause y'all know I'm all about the muscle cars. You're a wormy cut sucker, you know that? Oh! And a hey, who would have guessed it? Another unfair copyright claim. Sorry y'all, I don't want to be like that one food bugging you outside of a gas station for a dollar. But why give it to them when I'm actually out here working for it? Plus, if you don't give me a dollar, then I might actually be out there asking you one for real. Ah, come on, bro. Just kidding, but I've decided to open a Patreon after this original upload got unfairly claimed. Since every time a freaking video like this gets claimed, I'm losing anywhere from five to eight hundred dollars in like 40 hours of my time. However, you all can change that because once I finally get enough Patreon support, I can ultimately do all the other videos that you guys have been wanting me to do. Like Stand and Deliver, La Bamba, Boulevard Nights, without the worry of being ganked by these stingy ass studio companies. Also, I might do stickers exclusively through Patreon. Again, sorry to bug, but the offer's there. If not, just please like, comment, and subscribe. And back to the video. In the evening, Mia and Brian go on a date and Brian finally gets to order that tuna. All the while, another heist happens and Brian gets a call to participate in a raid. Also, there's no bullet in that mag. Is that a scope on a pistol? And did he just smack the back of this MP5? The law enforcement raids the Asian crew, choke slam and all. Despite this, they were wrong, and it wasn't the Asian crew doing the hijacking. So, Brian gets his ass chewed out for this. And hold up, is Brian Sergeant Buffalo Bill? Let me look that up real quick. Tuck my junk in and dance naked in front of a mirror that is Buffalo Bill. Back on track, Brian pushes for more info with Don, and it works because Dom lets him in on a little bit more information, if and only if Brian wins at the race wars. Directions. 
for Race Wars. And oh, I just did a video on Race Wars not too long ago. Please make sure to check that out. Anyways, now they're at the Race Wars and the tech savvy dude on Dom's crew decides to race the leader of the rival Asian crew for pink slips. And he then loses and punks out going AWOL. And the Asian gang leader dude then presses Dom about it. And out of nowhere calls Dom a rat because he got swatted and he thinks Dom has something to do with it. SWAT came into my house disrespected my whole family because somebody knocked me out it was you and this is where variable number five of a hood film arises a crew slash gang street fight later that evening brian catches dom leaving to go hit a lick and he basically snitches himself out to mia in order to catch up with dom since the first time i met you i've been undercover i'm a cop you're a wormy sucker you know that the heist goes on but it basically backfires on them because the drivers actually brought some heat with them this time they try to abort but vince's wire harness gets stuck to his arm and the whole mission basically goes to shit <laughs> Brian comes in and saves the day, but he basically rats himself out to be an undercover agent. So they're able to save Vince while Dom's crew bails out. Brian then locates Dom and tries to bring him in. More running! I'm not running! I didn't call the police, but don't push me! Put the gun down! I swear to God! You are the cop! <laughs> That was a good one. Despite this though, Dom is trying to save that one tech savvy dude from being hurt by the other crew. The tech savvy dude shows up but gets got by the Asian crew. <laughs> after that, Dom and Brian both go after the assailants, which leads to a pretty cool chase sequence. Now we're at that one iconic scene where Dom makes a run for it even though the laws of physics don't really matter. It doesn't end too well for Dom's charger. That's not what I had in mind. But Brian gives him a 10 second car to get away from the popo and the film ends at that. In the end, was The Fast and the Furious truly a hood film? Well, I personally believe so, to a certain extent. I mean, there's a certain hood feel to it. Plus, it's already racked up a count on the hood variable scoreboard. However, this film isn't just a hood film or a blockbuster. I mean, I feel like it's kind of iconic for everyone. It is amazing to see how far these films have gone. Like, I'd say the sky is the limit for this franchise, but no, it's not. Like, how the hell is every main Fast and the Furious character now an Avenger? Never mind. how the hell are they now a DC superhero? Overall, The Fast and the Furious is a solid 8.5 out of 10 orales. So are you gonna watch part 10? And if this video does any good, I might do another Fast and the Furious video on part 4, since it's got cartels and Mexicans. And also, if you want to help out the channel, then please check out my Patreon. If there's ads on this video, it's most likely because Universal put them on there, or because I left them on there, since even though I don't get the money, at least YouTube still pushes my channel. But in the end, Commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing is way more than enough. Thank you very much, and until next time, Universal, you're a warm cocksucker.